tell me a little bit about you and what you do, how long you've been working in the engineering field um, and what sort of inspired you to work at Electrical Safety First. Yeah, just tell me a little bit about sort of how you got into it um, to start with. Okay, well, I've obviously been in the electrical product safety field for a long time, about 40 years, actually. When I was 15 at school, you chose uh, subjects for O-level. And in those days, you, you couldn't choose everything you wanted to do, but I, I didn't particularly want to do uh, physics, maths, anything like that. I do remember the um, physics teacher trying to encourage me and my friend to choose physics. Um, and at that, when you're at 15, you're not really interested in soldering iron <laughs> boys or, you know, Ohm's Law or anything. So I didn't do it, nor did she. After I'd done my O-levels, I got a job working for um, the Testing Research Centre for which laboratories as a lab technician. Um, so by then I was probably 19-ish, something like that, studying ONC levels and uh, the chap that worked for electrical safety because we checked all the sort of consumer electrical products right. so the chap working for electrical safety saw me come in and snapped me up and so he began training me so that's how I started and uh, so I was looking at electrical safety of products from the consumer's perspective so I started off at that level when I was about 20. I went on carrying on studying, went on to HNC while I was working. I suppose I could actually say but there was a lot of encouragement from my mum. So she was uh, growing up in the 1950s and I remember her saying you should go into a male orientated job because there'll be more opportunities, salaries will be better, that type of mm -hmm. thing. So that, that was a, a bit of a push. So anyway, after doing the uh, my job, at, I was with Witch Consumer Association for 18 years. But during that time, I had an awful lot of different jobs. So I started off on the bench with the soldering iron, like I said, and Ohm's Law. Um, and I carried all the way up to uh, doing standards representation. Um, that took me to, that was at European level, so that took me to a lot of European cities sitting on the electrical safety committees, electrotechnical committees of, of which they still do now. Um, yes, and they were all very male orientated. So you'd sit in a committee room with three or four people representing the member state. And I would say probably 90% were men. Yeah. And there were a few women who were always quite exceptional when they were there, but it was mainly men. What did it feel like to work around men, like pretty much your whole your whole career so far, especially if you were quite young as well? It's always been quite a pleasure really working with the men I've worked with. Um, always quite straightforward. Your experience has been quite positive. Uh, yeah. Do you think that something would hold you back from, from choosing a career path it, it, like today? What I've seen, there is encouragement. Um, so I think it would be easier. But I might be wrong because I haven't been, I'm not young anymore, so I don't know what sort of processes mm. you guys go through. But from what I um, witnessed working with Electrical Safety First, of course, we've got three specific teams. We've got our policy team, we've got our, um, our media team and the technical team. The technical team, of course, is still men, apart from myself. Um, but all the <laughs> other teams aren't. There's a, a big mixture. So I'm working with a lot of young women that, that where their role is to campaign for the, for the issues that we've raised technically. What advice would you give to someone who is considering going down that that route of engineering I mean the, the field when I was talking to Emma the other day it's quite broad um, so you know you don't really know what engineering field you want to go into um, and you don't really know until you try. What I would say is that it's such a broad area if you go into engineering on a general level what I found is that the doors open all over the place things that you don't expect 
So if you've got a good engineering background, the world is almost your oyster. And I think you'd be surprised what could come across, what you could come across. It, it's it's very, 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 very wide um, uh, and quite in-depth and expen- extensive, but it doesn't have to be either. So, yeah, go for it. That's what I would say. Go for it because it's there, it, there's a lot of scope to do many different things and getting a good grounding in engineering, I'm sure, would, you know, leave you stand in good stead. I know you kind of said it's it's a bit of a weird one how you got into it, but I think it's encouraging that you have been able to just keep pushing through and working with, you know, I guess you don't really have, you can't compare it to working with a whole group of women, but like when you mentioned, it was very male dominated and that was just how it was. Also, you know, your mum encouraged you, which is also nice to hear as well, um, that you had that support at the time. Yeah, it is. And it's also, if you think about my time with electrical safety, I've worked from age 18 to the age I am now. And I've never really, once, if I finished a job, I found another job. I've never had big gaps. I've had one or two small gaps, but the, my career has gone on and on. And now I'm uh, at the point where really retirement's behind me but I don't you know have I've never had a problem with my career and my pursuits because of the fields that I've covered I suppose so the opportunities have been there and a lot of people when they get into their 60s it's more of a struggle but uh, you know for me I see that still the opportunities are there that's great